of your lives. Okay, uh, we will call a regular meeting of the Capitola Planning Commission to order and roll call. Uh, Commissioner Ruth? Here. Commissioner Christensen? Here. Uh, Commissioner Welch? Here. Commissioner Wilt? Here. And Chairman is here. A uh, oral communications, additions, and deletions to the agenda. Um, Do we have any? I'm going to ask uh, Planner Sasanto if he received any additional materials for his item today or since the packet's gone out? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. No additions or deletions. Question. Thank you. I had a question about the agenda, which was the uh, public hearing. Uh, be the color board discussion. Do we want that to be a public hearing or just a uh, discussion among commissioners? Um, you know, I thought it wouldn't hurt to put it on as a public hearing in case anybody wanted to chime in on it, but it's. All right. Um, okay. Previously, we'll we had it as a director's then. report. Yep. I guess we forgot to do the pledge, so let's uh, take a brief moment to do the pledge and also my introduction. So, okay, everyone standing or. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, which stands in the republic under which it stands, one nation, and justice for all. So, liberty, justice for all. Okay, we've got it down to like, like one of those choral readings where they go in sequence. Uh, okay, next uh, is. Uh, Public comments, this is an opportunity for anyone, any member of the public to address items that are not on the agenda. And uh, you know, in the past, we've kind of taken a two minute break here, but it seems like we could, at the beginning, just have people let us know in advance if they have any public comments. So, uh, Sean, did any, has anyone sent anything in? Uh, Matt will actually be checking for public comments tonight. Okay. And we've not received any emails. Yep, no emails. And let me look. Don't see any hands raised, so. Okay. Well, I, you know, in our, in our introduction to the meeting, maybe we should add something about if uh, there's going to be any public comment. They should present that, uh, be ready to present that. Yeah, I, I believe oh. that uh, Planner Orbach has a slide for that to explain how the public okay. can comment. So, Matt, if you could pull up those okay. slides. Yeah, sorry, it's hard to keep going back and forth with this. Every time I need to check this, I have to take this down. So. Okay, let me go back to my introduction then uh, for the uh, general public. In accordance with the current shelter in place orders, this Planning Commission meeting is not physically open to the public. Limited staff are present in the Planning Commission chambers and the Planning Commission is participating remotely by a video call. Members of the Planning Commission can use the reaction choices in Zoom to indicate they would like to speak, similar to raising a hand. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed live from the city's website and with the, the Zoom meeting link also available on our website. Our technician tonight is Kingston. Public comment can be emailed or called into the Planning Commission. Members of the public may submit public comment once for each item by email or phone call. You may not submit more than one email or call per item to call in comments. Before the item you wish to comment on, call the phone number and enter the meeting ID displayed. Press the hash key when prompted per participant ID. To raise your hand to make a comment, press star nine on your phone, wait to hear that you are unmuted and then make your comment. We'll have up to three minutes to speak. If you are watching the meeting via Zoom, you can use the participant option to raise your hand and make a comment when unmuted by our moderator. To email comments, identify the item you wish to comment on in your email subject line. Email comments will be accepted starting now up until I announce 
that public comment for that item is closed. Each emailed comment will be read aloud for up to three minutes or displayed on a screen. Emails and calls received outside of the comment period outline will not be included in the record. Okay, back to the agenda. We're on item 2C, which is commission comments. Anyone? Hearing no one. Staff comments. Anything further from on behalf of staff? No further comments from staff this evening. Nothing at this time. Okay, that takes us to the minutes. And we're apparently a little bit behind in our minutes. And today we're considering the April 2nd regular meeting minutes, which were in the packet. And I understand that we're going to be catching up as we go forward. Yes. So does anyone have any additions, corrections to the April 2nd minutes? If not, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Commissioner Ruth, do we have a second? Second. That would be Commissioner Wilk, I think. Welch. Welch. Okay. I couldn't tell the voice. All right. Roll call vote. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Commissioner Welch? Aye. And that would be unanimous. So those minutes are approved. And we have two public hearings. The first one is 212 Cherry Vale. And two of the commissioners, I think, one being myself, are recused from that hearing due to having property within the 500-foot radius. So Vice Chair Ruth will take over this hearing. Okay. So we have a public hearing tonight on 212 Cherry Avenue. It's a design permit for a remodel and a third-story addition with a variance for the maximum height limit and to relocate nonconforming areas of the structure for a single-family residence located within the RMLM Multifamily Residential Low-Median Density Zoning District. The project is in the coastal zone but does not require a coastal development permit. So at this time, if there's no questions from the Planning Commission, we'll have the staff do the presentation. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. Vice Chair Ruth. The application before you is, as you said, for 212 Cherry Avenue, where the applicant is proposing to construct a third-story addition to an existing single-family residence. The application includes a variance request for the maximum height limit and to relocate nonconforming areas of the structure. The property is located at 212 Cherry Avenue within the Multifamily Residential Zoning District. The existing residence, as it appears today, surrounded by a mix of single- and multifamily homes, including three-story homes on the north side of Cherry Avenue. Cherry Avenue divides the upper and lower village zoning districts with low-density multifamily on the north side and the central village zoning on the south. This is the proposed site plan. The applicant is proposing to relocate a portion of the nonconforming third-story area shown in orange and construct a third-story addition equal to the removed floor area shown in blue. The applicant is requesting a variance to relocate that floor area to an area partially within size setbacks and on a property that exceeds the maximum floor area ratio. The area, again, in orange, this area here is where they're proposing to remove from and over here is where they're proposing to add. These are the existing and proposed south or front and west elevations. The west side is the side with the staircase. The proposed remodel utilizes stucco siding on the first floor and coming through siding on the upper two floors. The existing asymmetrical gable on the top roof is replaced with two flat roofs with third-story windows. An arbor is also proposed on the roof deck. The 
these are the existing and proposed north or rear and east side elevations. The line in blue here, just so you know, is the 25-foot approximate height from grade. The application includes uh, two variant requests. First, the applicant is proposing to raise the height of the structure to 27 uh, feet, six inches for the structure and 28 feet, five inches for the rooftop arch. Single family residences within the multifamily zoning district have a maximum height of 25 feet. The applicant is requesting a variance to exceed that 25 foot height. The capital law municipal code states that the planning commission may grant a variance permit when uh, it makes when they can make the findings shown above. The subject property uh, for finding A, the subject property has special circumstances related to the topography because it slopes up towards the rear of the property from the front uh, to the rear of the structure footprint. Grade increases by 13 feet. Currently, the third floor is a split level configuration. The remodel would raise the interior floor height to create three full stories. Um, with the height increase, the residence would still appear, or the residence would still appear lower than the residences to the west because 212 Cherry Avenue is situated lower on the portion of the hill. Due to the lot topography, the strict application of height for height requirements would deprive the subject property of privileges enjoyed by other properties in the vicinity and under identical zone classification. Staff reviewed the characteristics of 11 adjacent properties. At least five of the properties reviewed have three stories and appear to exceed the 25 foot height limit, which are starting grade. The grant of a variance would not constitute a grant special privilege because approximately half of this block exceeds the height limit already. The same findings are required for the second variance, which is to locate, relocate the non-conforming area on that third floor. The subject property has a width of 25 feet and the lot is narrow compared to adjacent properties, which have an average width of 35 feet. The project will also correct a significant non-conformity by removing the cantilevered third story portion of the structure, which encroaches six inches over into the adjacent property. Due to the property width, the strict application of development standards for setbacks and, and non-conformities would deprive the subject property of privileges enjoyed by other properties in the vicinity and under identical zoning classification. It should be noted that this this portion of the project would not increase the floor area ratio. Staff reviewed those same, or staff reviewed characteristics of those same 11 adjacent properties. Staff visually surveyed the characteristics of the residences in relation to the lot size and dimension. At least nine of the properties appear to encroach into the required setback. Eight properties appear to exceed any allowable floor area ratio for the zoning district. The grant of a variance would not constitute a grant special privilege because the properties exceed the maximum bar or floor area ratio and have non-conforming size setbacks. With that, staff recommends the Planning Commission approve the project based on the conditions and approval uh, of approval and funding. Thank you, Sean. Are there any questions for staff before we open the public hearing? Hearing none, uh, Sean or Katie, can you place the instructions for uh, making comments on the public hearing on the screen? And we'll give the public a few minutes to respond. It looks as if there is um, a, someone, an attendee in the Zoom meeting, Matt. Yeah. 
uh, Karen Christopher. Would you like me to allow her to talk? I, I have the ability as well. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that okay. from her also. Okay, I'll open. Okay, Karen Christopher, um, it, this is your opportunity to speak. Well, I'm just curious because we've never participated in any process like this before that we submitted our comments to be included with your agenda packet. So do I assume that you've all read that and that I don't need to read it now? I've seen it and read it. Okay. You do have so, the you have the opportunity to speak if you would like, in addition to your written comments. Well, I feel like we we said everything in our our public comments. We're just surprised and and not really sure how this is going to look or feel, um, as far as from our vantage point. But I can understand why you're looking at it from Cherry Street, but it's going to affect other neighbors behind and to the side of them. So I just hope you take into consideration um, our feelings too. And we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Christopher. Are there uh, any other comments, Matt, that we've received? No. Okay. I think we've had ample time then. I think we'll close the public portion then and uh, bring it back to the commission for discussion. Uh, who would like to comment? Commissioner Wilk. Commissioner Wilk Commissioner is Christensen. Thank you. Quickly, uh, Commissioner Wilk. We've had we've had a couple, in my opinion, along this area, and it is one of those areas that um, reads a little bit um, of a different, different character because of the size of the, the lot, the location of the lot, the hill that it's on. And uh, I know in some cases we approved uh, the variance, and in some cases we denied the variance. Um, you know, it's interesting to look at how we measure the actual height of this um, project. If you look at, at it from the front prior to the setbacks, it meets our height requirement, and then from the rear of the house also, it meets our height requirements. But it's that middle section that seems to extend over the height requirement because it doesn't follow the exact terrain. So I find these uh, always interesting in how we uh, come up to some type of conclusion on this. But uh, I, I think given the, the area that it's in, um, the topography, what's happened with the other neighbors, um, I, I personally right now think that uh, I'm in favor of at least the variance for the height requirement. Okay. Thank you, TJ. Any other comments? Uh, pardon me. Uh, I visited the site. Vice Chair. Pardon? Um, it looks as if the applicant's representative uh, did not raise their hand during the public hearing, but now I see the hand raised. Would you like to take the public comment or? Um... Certainly. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. Um, Dennis Norton, this is now your opportunity to make public comment. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't get into the Zoom meeting. We, I, I watched the whole thing to this point, but I thought I was on there, and I don't see that I am. Um, I'm, I'm here, and I'm representing uh, uh, Marty and Linda Formico, who is actually, they've owned this house for 15 years, and they're longtime Capitola people. Um, that uh, with this remodel um, is, is long overdue on this house. It has, it has a horrible floor plan. I think probably shipbuilders built it because the ceiling in the upper floor is only six foot tall. And so they're used to below deck type uh, settings. And so to make, to make this house work, um, what we're doing, we're just, we're raising the upper floor to make it even across the whole building from the second floor. And then it's raising, raising the floor of the uh, second to where it matches the existing floor. So it, it's even one area. To do that, the rear door on the building is raised four feet higher than it is now. And you were coming out, you're coming up into the house and then you had to step up again to get to the upper floor. It's like a four level house. 
And so we're making that, and so the backyard deck will be raised to the same height as the upper floor. We're not changing the height of the deck at all or the configuration. The deck stays exactly like it is. What we are doing is a portion of this, of this house um, is overhanging uh, the property line. We're cutting that off, and what we'd like to do is not, not increase by, by one foot the, the square footage of the house, but just relocate to the deck area. And, and by your ordinance, the deck area already counts as, as living area as it is. So this is just a trade-off from one area to the other. We're not increasing the size of the house. The deck and the whole facade from the front as from the village, from the street, will not change at all. You'll see the same house that you see now. Um, from the back, yes, it's going to raise it approximately four feet, and we checked it out, and, and we're really not impeding on any view areas. We're not touching the tree. I know there's requests from the neighbors not to touch that. We have no plans of, 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 of removing the tree. And um, we, have, we actually have uh, letters from three surrounding neighbors, actually four surrounding neighbors, um, supporting this, uh, this project, and it's in your packet. But uh, it, it, the, the structure has problems, and it's maybe gone through, I would say, over time, maybe 10 different remodels, and then there's, just, there's no flow to the floor plan. Um, the former coach would like to make this eventually their, their full-time residence and move here. So um, this is the, the meeting and the deaths for the remodel. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dennis. Uh, yeah, I was going to say I, I visited the site today to get a better feel of exactly what was happening out there. And after looking at it and also looking at the neighboring properties, it, it seems like a reasonable request to me. So. Are there any further comments from the commission? If not, is there a motion to approve with the conditions, uh, the design uh, findings, the variance findings, and the sequel findings? I move to uh, to adopt the uh, accept staff recommendation. Is there a second? Not hearing a second, I'll second it. Huh. And uh, of the roll call, please. Commissioner Christensen? I think there's an issue with, uh, sh let me unmute. Can you unmute? Yeah, there it is. Sorry. I'm, it's getting choppy, I apologize. But um, I, I vote aye. Commissioner Welch? Aye. And Commissioner Ruth votes aye. So the motion carries, uh, the permit is granted, and that brings us to the next item, and Chairperson Newman will take back over. Did Chairperson Newman leave? No, uh, I'll unmute. Now I'm unmuted. Okay. <laughs> I hope that wasn't intentional. <laughs> Editorial comments. Okay. Um, so we had a, a, a discussion of the color board issue that was raised by Commissioner Wilk at the last hearing. There were only three commissioners present, and we had a very interesting uh, diversity of opinion about the extent to which the Planning Commission should be considering uh, color boards uh, in the applications that come before it. Commissioner Wilk had a kind of a moderate view that uh, design features should, and, and he can correct me if I misstate this, design features uh, should be considered, but color not. Um, Commissioner Ruth felt fairly strongly that it's the job of the Planning Commission to consider uh, design and character of the uh, neighborhoods and color is one important part of that and I was on the other side of that I feel like it's not really the Planning Commission's job to interfere in aesthetics any more than absolutely necessary so um, we thought that it would be good to get to, to continue this and get input from the other two commissioners and with that I'll let uh, Commissioner Wilk uh, maybe uh, chime in here because he's the one that um, originally brought this to our attention and 
he can tell us if I mischaracterized his position. Chair Newman, if you'd like, I could give a quick overview of what's required by code and applications, oh, okay. if you don't mind, just and to bring them. You've got to unmute the commissioners, too. Oh, wait. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm, Peter, uh, okay, Commissioner Wilk is now unmuted. So for this discussion, um, within the design, for a design permit to be issued, one of the considerations that the Planning Commission must consider is the consideration relating to architectural character. They must look at the suitability of the building for its purpose and also the appropriate use of materials to ensure cat compatibility with the intent of the title. Um, so in the code, there is a requirement of the appropriate use of materials. So in this discussion tonight, um, I, I, I have some slides that I can show examples of, but I really do want to stress that removing the requirement for materials is not something we should be considering because it's a, one of the findings that must be made by the Planning Commission. So the discussion should really be focused on color. Otherwise, we need to update our... Um, our code in order to make a change. And materials are also important for when you get to the building portion of a building review and to make sure they're suitable for the design, for um, that they comply with the building code. And that happens actually first during the architectural and site review meeting with our building official in the room. So she, she looks at materials at well, as well. Um, so the only requirement that we have for color and material board is on our application and under E it lists colors and material boards. There's no specificity beyond that in the application. Um, one thing I'd like the Planning Commission to consider this evening is that we could under E add some more specificity if you wanted color and material, if you wanted color only um, to apply to commercial and multifamily buildings and therefore single family would be exempt. That, that's one approach that I think would work well under um, in this review. So any multifamily or commercial building would have to submit a color material boards. But um, other than that, materials are required as part of the elevations that the Planning Commission sees regularly. So with that, I have just a few slides of examples. This was a sign application. They used copper and they showed the copper material here. This is a single family home and just a simple color material and another single family home and an outdoor dining showing the materials for the area that would be paved as well as um, the trellis and the chairs and the uh, staging area. So with that, I'll turn the discussion over to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Yeah, I think, uh, Commissioner Wilk, uh, as I understood what you were bringing forward, it was only really the color issue anyway. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. So I don't think, I mean, I've expressed the kind of a more extreme view, but I'm not with the intention that we were going to do anything about it because <laughs> that, I'm just further along Commissioner Wilk's thinking than is going. Okay, so anyway, well, sorry. So yeah, I, I'm not interested in, uh, in, in modifying the code. I'm just trying to clarify it and apply it um, as, uh, as appropriate. So really all I'm asking for is to remove the word color from the application or as it's listed, the, the plant specification checklist. Uh, and, and it is not in the code. It, and, and so to, to insist on it or to have it as a default checklist item is I think it's a little uh, uh, an, uh, an overreach. It's beyond the direction of the code for us to ask for uh, what the color is. Now, some codes do have color requirement. I looked at the Santa Clara County ordinance. They have a requirement for color on their mountainside building. So they, they like to have, uh, or insist on having earth tones and a low reflectivity index. But 
I mean, that makes sense. You you know, you're looking up in the mountains. You want to see, uh, you want to emphasize the, the hillside and not any root structures on it. So, uh, so there's reasons to have colors in the in the code, but we don't have it. So we shouldn't be asking for it. We we have no community standard. Um, we had many applications like the one today that didn't even have a color board yet. It was on the checklist and apparently was overlooked because the uh, Cherry Street. Uh, uh, didn't have their colors. So, well, you know, why is that? Well, they're not following the checklist. So, it, you know, that's, it, it's clearly something that no one insists on, so why is it even there? So, uh, Katie mentioned the, the commercial buildings and the larger structures that, you know, maybe we would want to see a color board. I know that was one of the items that Commissioner Ruth brought up uh, that, uh, that if it's a big project, we want to see materials, we want to see the out, you know, we want to have a good feeling that it's going to fit in the community. But as Katie uh, mentioned last time, that we do have this enhanced vis visualization standard in the new code that, that allows for for us, the, uh, the uh, majority of the, uh, uh, the commission, or perhaps just the staff themselves to say, you know, we really want to see color on this project. It's a, it's a, it's a big project. We want to see color, but my point is that it should not be a default that's on the checklist. Uh, and and I think it's a, it's kind of a big deal in my mind because, you know, I don't want to needlessly harass unsuspecting applicants with requirements and items they have to worry about that that are unnecessary. I'm mainly focusing on homeowners here. Um, I know in my case, my wife hadn't selected the color yet, and so she was pressured to select the color when we did our remodel before she was ready to. Uh, and it turns out no one really cares about color, so that was an unnecessary uh, exercise that, that I put her through. Um, you know, asking for color also kind of implies to, to someone who's never been through this before say well does that mean we have to change the color of our house we have to reapply or to what extent you know is our color uh, going to be monitored and, and controlled I mean there's all kinds of misinterpretations that could could happen and do happen when you uh, when you have a requirement like this that that is unnecessary so uh, you know and finally, someone may feel that they're intimidated because they want to, you know, the Planning Commission is an intimidating body to stand in front of, and perhaps they'll select a safe color in order to get to get their project approved and end up with something they don't really want. So, um, <laughs> finally, I had an idea, what if we had a commissioner who's color blind? Does that disqualify a commissioner from being on commission because he can't see colors? <laughs> anyway. That's a silly one, but the point is, uh, it's not something that we really require. We, we definitely don't require. It doesn't seem to be anything that we uh, really care about. There's no community standard, so let's just remove that simple word from the application and direct staff to do so as the commission, and. Uh, and, and leave it at that. If we if we have if there's a big issue that comes up where we want to want to see the color, we can always request it. But it should not be the default. And that's that's what I think. It, before the other commissioners uh, speak on this, uh, maybe we can change the uh, procedure a little here and ask if any of the public members are going to want to address this issue. If, while we're speaking, they can send in either their uh, written comments or let us know that they want to speak, and then we'll come back to that. In the meantime, we'll get some thoughts from Commissioner Ruth, Commissioner Welsh, and Commissioner Christensen. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Newman. Yeah, as I mentioned last time, I think our design oversight right now is so limited, we shouldn't even limit it even greater, that we, actually we should be strengthening our design oversight. I think the arguments Mr. Wilkes makes are pretty specious arguments. Those things just don't happen. And I spoke to a couple of people who have applicants before the Planning Commission almost on a regular basis. They said the color isn't a big issue. It's no big deal. 
And I believe occasionally, not often, but occasionally, the Arkansas site committee will recommend color accents in various places on buildings or change or add color accents. So I don't believe we should take it out. It's there. It's harmless. It's, uh, it's not a burden on any applicant. And uh, it just gives us a little more ability to address design issues. Well, uh, this commissioner wants to jump in here. I'm kind of uh, ambivalent to the whole um, portion of it being in our code or however we're looking at it in the application. I mean, it seems like many times we don't end up uh, that builder may not use the colors that there um, is initially a plan. I know same for us that uh, Peter went through. We picked colors before we were really ready to pick colors, but. Um, I think for the residential homes, it's not really an issue. And, and since we don't hold anybody to that standard, uh, I don't know that it should be an issue. I, and you know, the thing is, is uh, a week after you get through building uh, your place, you get paint whatever color you want. So I don't know that it really matters. And then, you know, you look at what is the community standard. I mean, we have a Venetian that's been there for uh, many, many years with uh, every color imaginable just about. But you may not want on your neighbor's house, but it stands out and is an icon for Capitola. I, I certainly believe that on uh, the larger commercial projects uh, that we should have some insight into what those colors and materials are. But uh, with the residential homes, I, I'm not really in favor of that, at least enforcing them. I think sometimes seeing the color adds to the accent of the house and the design. But I don't know that we need to enforce it, but then again, it doesn't seem like we really are. So those are my thoughts. Commissioner Christensen, do you have any um, comments? I, I have. I, I do. I do. Am I, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hello? Okay, good. Um, I, I do have, a, a, in processing planning, um, submittals myself. I've, I've found that it increases the understanding of the project to the public and I feel that um, communicating as much information as possible that you, you can come up with uh, and presenting it to the public in a public hearing um, into the planning department really kind of subverts a lot of problems along the way with architecture and design. So going to the Arkansas meeting and talking to um, the other staff members and, and making the effort to really articulate what you want to build in your project makes it um, makes the project move a lot smoother within the community um, with with the homeowners themselves and I feel like the, the more information including color really adds to the, the overall um, I want to say ease of the project and so I think I, I'm, I, I do like the part that, that you submit color with your materials for it. And even if you change the color slightly, um, I've always felt the planning department um, staff is always there to kind of negotiate and just and help people through their projects. So I, I really don't feel that it's a bad thing to have and to um, request. Thank you. So or, are you done? What, do you have anything more to add? Yes. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm done. Thanks. Okay, so if I'm hearing everyone correctly, it appears to me that we have two commissioners who don't feel like color should be required. We have two commissioners who feel it's a very beneficial to have the uh, color submitted, and we have one who's ambivalent. So I don't think there's any action to be taken at this point. <laughs> If anyone wants to start an advisory motion, I guess we can do that. Um, it sounds like it's going to either fail or uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Well, then let's make a motion and see what happens. Yeah, let's do it. Go ahead. <laughs> but I would like to move that any commission direct staff to remove the word color from the plan specification checklist. Do we have a second? 
The chair will second the motion. Okay, roll call vote. Commissioner Welch. See, I told you I was ambivalent, so I don't know. I'll just say no. Okay, Commissioner Ruth? No. Commissioner Christensen? No. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. And chair is yes, so that uh, motion fails. And uh, the um, application form will stay the way it is for now. But thank you for the discussion. It's been very um, edifying. So that takes us to director's report. Um, I, I did want to let, yeah. the only item to bring you up to date on is the uh, city council discussed the update to the IHO last week. And we'll be bringing forward um, a larger overview of affordable housing to the um, city council in the future and continued discussion on the IHO, but no action was taken at that time. So I will, that's the inclusionary housing ordinance. So I'll continue to keep the planning commission up to date um, with next steps on that item. And that concludes the director's report this evening. Do any of the commissioners uh, have anything they would like to uh, add at this point to the meeting? Well, I do, if, not, if none of the other commissioners do. This is uh, my, my uh, monthly uh, complaints about uh, mattress firm signs. Today they only had three, so we're making progress. Mm. They only had three illegal signs along the road. So I believe that I'm getting feedback here for some reason, but I believe that they were already fined once for not complying and now they're again not complying uh, seems like we need to increase the enforcement and to a point where they will comply yes the fines get more expensive by the day so now that um, that's been brought to our attention we'll start fining again yeah it's labor day weekend kind of probably brings brings them out i think but uh, it's still not fair to the other people who comply with our uh, rules. Okay. Thank any, you for bringing it. Anyone else? If not, uh, this is our, let's see, April, May, June, July, August. This is our sixth Zoom meeting, and who would ever thought that we'd still be meeting by Zoom, but I assume we will in October again, so see you then. Yep. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you.